It's a personal massager from eBay and many other places that are selling them. They're not that expensive, but what are they for massaging? Well, let's turn it on by pressing this button at the back. Is it for massaging your beard? No, I don't think it's for massaging the beard. Is it for massaging your shoulder? Well, that's very nice. Mmm, no, not for massaging that. Is it for massaging down? No, it's not for massaging down there either. Just for your neck and, and other bits of your body uh, to make you feel refreshed and invigorated. But tell you what, let's take it back to the bench, take it apart and see what's inside. And just in case anybody's wondering, this panel up here, because people always ask, is a supercomputer. Search my channel for the word supercomputer. But let's go to the bench and take this apart. Vibratory massage guns. I have seen these not just in all the online sellers, but also in high street shops. They seem to be very, very popular and all styled on a common theme. And they always show it with this big, huge ball stuck in the end, which is a sort of like a firm foam. But this one came with all manner of accessories. I'm not sure what they're for. I have a sneaky feeling that some of them might actually be for bits down there, if you know what I mean. Since these are ultimately probably used for many pleasurable things. Let me show you it going. It's got a little digital readout in the back. It's got a couple of buttons. If you press and hold this one, it starts vibrating backwards and forwards. The camera is showing it at a, at a sort of like, a, I think it's I'm not sure how that's going to come across. It doesn't go as slow as it's showing on the camera. It's actually going... Yeah, you can hear the speed it's going at. But that's at its lowest setting. And it's interesting to know that if you try and stall this... It revs up, so it's got uh, either over current sensing or it's got uh, rotational sensing. If you press the plus, it increases in speed. If you turn it off by pressing and holding the, the minus, uh, it goes off after a while. And if you press this button, I think that displays the battery percentage. The multiplexing is very visible there, very stylish and swirly, but in reality, it was just displaying 80 there. Let's open it up. So this thing is heavy. I mean, really surprisingly heavy. I don't know. Initially, I thought maybe the handle's full of the uh, batteries, um, but I think the motor's in the handle. It's so heavy it makes me suspicious there might be a weight. So maybe the batch in the top, the movement is very low. If I stick that thing in again, noting that this is hard plastic, a little rubber sleeve, and it's the rubber sleeve that is used to grip it in. But if I pull it out, its movement is actually pretty low. And you can feel it slightly cogging on the uh, motor. So I think it's direct drive. But it's only about quarter an inch, six millimetres of movement uh, from the look of it. Let's get a screwdriver and start taking the screws out of this. So I shall grab a convenient screwdriver. I should have checked sizes out beforehand, but I didn't. I have a horrible feeling that this is going to be one of these products that you don't just remove the screws, but you also have to peel off the sticky labels uh, on it as well to get it open. But we'll find out in due course. I'm intrigued to see what it's using for feedback. And uh, I'm guessing it'll be the usual battery charging circuitry, although it does keep a little count as it charges. You can see the battery capacity increasing. So that's those screws out. Oh, this end will come off, won't it? This this end has been pushed on. Is that going to be a bayonet cap? Oh, it has rotated bayonet cap style. Is it actually going to bayonet cap off? Not so sure about that. It may clip on. I think I'm going to have to remove this label, so I shall remove it. Rated voltage, oh, 7.4 volts. I thought it was just going to use a single cell. Rated power, 20 watts. It's debatable whether well, that's going to be accurate. Uh, am I just... Do I, do I need to remove this? Well, that didn't go very well, did it? Um, well, it's removed now. There is a seam under there. I don't see any other screws. Is this going to come off in a control manner? I'm going to have to take the little display bit off as well. I'm not sure. So let's part this now. Part. Like the Moses effect. I think this is going to have to come off. Hold on. I shall struggle with it a bit more, but if it doesn't come off easily, I'll pause momentarily while I try and force that off. This is where I chew it up, but that's okay. That's why I get these things. So I take mine to bits, so you don't have to take yours to bits. That was quite promising. It 
Sounds like it may clip on. It does clip on. There is a screw thread. Okay, well, now I know. I have used unreasonable force without due cause. Still not coming off. Have I missed a screw? I may have missed a screw. That, that would help. How many screws are there in this? Yes, uh, getting all the screws out is definitely an advantage. Ooh, I see a big motor. And I see the cam mechanism. And it's got the double A's stuffed in it. So let's pop this out. Oh, that is a big motor. With a very simple cam system. Um, I don't immediately see magnetic sensing for position or an encoder. So that may just be measuring the current to actually determine its movement. Everything unplugs. That's nice. So let's pop this out. We've got uh, three connections to the battery pack. So there will be charge control circuitry. And this is a couple of screws. Let's zoom down a bit. It is a couple of screws holding the control circuit board in. There's the big MOSFET that is controlling it, I would guess. Other than that, oh, there's the sense resistor for the current. That explains part of the circuitry. Let's pop these screws out. And as I pull it out, it's very sticky. Oh, it was stuck to the membrane in the front. Okay. Right. It's got the usual bit of plastic over the display that I despise so much. Let's get that off and I shall uh, take some pictures and reverse engineer this and we can take a closer look. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. I'll zoom down a little bit onto this so we can get more detail. So on one side of the circuit board, we have the main microcontroller that is controlling everything. We also have the MOSFET that switches the motor. There's the back EMF spike, the flywheel diode for protection against spikes in the motor. I should write on here, motor, motor. And I'll write battery over here. That seems a good idea. Battery. It carries a disappointment. See how this middle pin is yellow? I coloured it yellow, expecting to find it going somewhere in the circuit board. No, it doesn't. It's, it's the disappointment. So there's a MOSFET here, switches the motor, and it's got a current sense resistor. Um, both the MOSFETs, because there are two in this, have a 10k uh, pull-down resistor in the gate, and also a 51 ohm gate resistor going to the microcontroller. Um, also on this side, we've got voltage monitoring for the battery. And we've got a 5 volt voltage regulator here and a inductor which forms part of a boost circuit so that when you plug 5 volts into this it can boost the, boat ba the voltage up to charge this battery which is 2 lithium cells. So it's theoretically up to 8.4 volts. Anything else worth mentioning on this side? Not really. A uh, 10 ohm resistor here feeding down to that little 5 volt regulator. If we take a look at the other side of the circuit board we see the digital readout. We also see two 330 ohm resistors feeding each digit. Um, and then the seven segment lines are all just common together and sent, well, they just go straight to the motor. But they're also going to these two buttons. And the buttons have a two mega ohm pull down resistor on them, which I'll show you on the schematic. It means they can multiplex them into the display because they've used every pin in the microcontroller. Here's a little transistor that switches the uh, inductor in pulses. I've flipped this image over so the inductor's actually on the other side of here. The USB connector does not have the res programming resistors that tell it it's a load, so therefore if you plug it into a smart, intelligent power supply, it may not detect it. Use a dumb power supply. It does come with a little Type-A USB charge cable. Um, this transistor switches the inductor and then the pulses go via the Schottky diode and they charge up the battery. What else is the other side here? Um, there's a couple of resistors just to detect when the USB is present so it will light the display and go through its I am charging routine. Okay, right, let's cut straight to the schematic. The schematic, if you wish, but I like to say schematic in the style of Sean Connery, Mish Moneypenny. 
Sometimes I wonder, do the younger viewers even know who James Bond was? Anyway, here is the USB supply coming on. Zero volt rail is common throughout, has is common. And it goes to these two resistors, 1K and 10K, dividing it down very slightly, but it doesn't really matter because that's 5 volts in, and this is also a 5 volt uh, supply feeding this microcontroller. So it charges the batteries via this inductor, which is 10 microhenry. 10 microhenry. And that is pulsed by the microcontroller itself. Now, imagine that you've just powered it up and the voltage is quite low. The voltage will just go straight through that short key diode. It will give it enough power via the regulator to actually power the microcontroller up anyway. So once it has actually powered up, it will start pulsing this, this uh, MOSFET, a little X01V. And uh, in doing so, it then builds up a magnetic field and when it turns off and it collapses it goes through the shot key and it charges the lithium cells which are over at this end of the circuit board to keep them out of the way. Notice the middle tap is not connected to anything. The reason for that is because the middle tap is not actually connected to anything. There is no voltage sensing. Kind of disappointed. I was looking for that on the schematic and thinking where is it? Answer, it's not. Uh, here is the 51 ohm resistor going to the gate of that MOSFET. There's a 10k pull down. Likewise over here um, tanky pull down 51 ohm uh, gate resistor. When you activate the buttons, and it's worth mentioning that effectively the two lines with the resistors are feeding the digits, and then there's seven lines coming out here. I've just grouped them together, and there are two of those lines feeding the digits that are actually going via these buttons to the zero volt rail via a two mega ohm resistor. Probably two mega ohm resistor because it may be pulling these low to actually light the segments um, are high. Not sure which one it's doing. But uh, either way, this resistor limits the current for protecting the outputs, which will be act as inputs at that point not at that time. But also it means if it is pulling them low, it'll, it means you won't get too much ghosting on the LEDs because it's a very low current. The voltage across the batteries is monitored by this 1 mega ohm resistor and a 270 k resistor and then that feeds back so it divides it down so it can monitor the voltage and terminate the charge at hopefully the correct level noting that it's making a guess if the cells are balanced or not if they get out of balance it will potentially overcharge one of the cells they're just relying on the fact that from you this battery pack is going to be splendid it's going to be well balanced maybe they plug it in and balance it and then they ship it out and forevermore it will be balanced apparently uh, the motor with the short key diode across for protection, the MOSFET, the current sense resistor down here, and that current sense resistor under high load, you'll get a voltage across that. That gets filtered via this one mega ohm resistor and this capacitor to smooth that out, get a nice stable reading, and the microcontroller then monitors the voltage across that resistor to actually determine how much current. So if you're actually using that and it stalls and the current shoots up, what I'm guessing it does is it will boost it up initially to try and get it running again to keep that get that current back down because it will be the highest in the stalled state. But if it gets uh, a sustained high voltage across this resistor, it will probably detect the motor is stalled or jammed and it will hopefully cut it off. A bit of science involved in that because it will potentially be put under load. The current will increase through the motor and the, therefore the voltage across that resistor will increase in normal use it will fluctuate up and down it must have thresholds that it detects and then gives it a boost and if it still doesn't get that current down uh, then it will probably turn the motor off I haven't tested that anything else here that's worth mentioning not really took a while to reverse engineer um, but was very straightforward to explain so there we have it um, tiny little circuit board they have used every single pin in the microcontroller and um ultimately that's it the the motion is being detected by current sensing for when it's under load or stalled so a bit of a disappointment that they've not used um proper cell monitoring what i thought they were going to do is monitor two voltage dividers and perhaps detect if whichever cell came up to 4.2 volts first it would have cut the charge off but it doesn't but maybe it's not even charging up to the full 8.4 volts maybe it's playing safe and just saying i'll charge up to 8 volts or just under that uh, again i haven't put it on charge for any length of time to see what happens there i mean i could i could put it in charge and then i could add a note to the description of this video i shall do that I usually uh, augment the description with any things that I missed or anything that the Patreon supporters, when they see the, the video for 
for assessment when I release it, any issues they may raise. But there it is. It's a logical circuit. It's minimalist. It's cheap. This is what it is. It's like sub ten pounds shipped massage gun with that sort of uh, fairly strong pulverizing action. I'm just going to grab the wood here. Other things worth mentioning. The battery sit in here. Let me just show you where the battery sit in. The battery sit in here like this, just above that cam that's going backwards and forwards. But it is limited, so it can't hit them, so to speak. And the motor itself has a bearing. It's a ball bearing race here by the look of it because it, it rotates very, very freely indeed for that reciprocating action with the eccentric cam. Um, and it goes through, its guide is a little rubber bush here with a flap uh, that it goes backwards and forwards. Oh, that's so dirty. But having said that, you know what this unit's going to get used for. It will be used by people who wish to relieve their hysteria. But that's it. Very interesting circuit. Disappointed about not monitoring the cell voltage strains that they even supply three connections on it. Um, and there's no protection inside that I can see because they wouldn't need the three connections otherwise. Uh, but there we have it. Uh, an interesting and straightforward circuit in a very popular device for your massagery self-pleasurement.